So, yes, my name is Paul Dobrin, and I have a background in studies of international crisis and conflict management. Uh, I am a long-term meditator, and I currently, use, I currently work in the intersection between 2,500-year-old contemplative traditions, positive psychology, and cutting-edge modern technology. Today, I will challenge you to grasp the potential of virtual reality used for human flourishing-oriented purposes. So, let's start with imagining a bit. Imagine that, on the one hand, you have a top-of-the-line, existing, proven, virtual reality platform. It's a virtual world, really. Huge areas where you can move around, and I think you can host hundreds of thousands of people simultaneously in these environments. The company behind this, MindArk, they have invested more than 50 million US dollars to develop this platform. So, on the one hand, we have this platform, and on the other hand, we have a team of international experts on human behavior, experts in the field of pedagogy, psychology, applied IT. Well, you see there's a whole lot of brain up there. And then imagine if you challenge this brain trust to redesign and rethink the game mechanics on the platform. Remove anything that has to do with violence, shooting and killing, and instead put in place a game mechanic that is pro-social in its nature and designed to bring out the best in us. This is what we are already doing. And how did we end up on this initiative? Well, we started looking at two main problems, and one of them is mental is illness. And I'm sure to the people in this room, I don't need to explain how big a problem that is in the world today. And, well, you have the more severe variations, but on a lesser extent, each and every one of us here in some way struggle with our relationship to ourselves, right? Sometimes, yeah, insecurity, inner critic, all that stuff, yeah. So that, that's one part of the problem. The other part of the problem is tribalism. My team, my friends, my school, my soccer club, my political party, all this. This perpetual divide between us and them. That's the other part of the problem. And what are the consequences of this? Well, the consequences are suffering and conflict. And suffering in, in all its shape on an individual level. We have ranging from stress and anxiety to, to more severe problems. And the conflicts, the conflicts are between individuals, between employees, between organizations, between many different levels. So, excuse me. These consequences reveal a real need. And that need is compassion. We all need compassion on an individual level, compassion towards ourselves, because this is, we, we already have the system of the stick and the carrot to motivate ourselves to do things, but that's kind of outdated now. So self-compassion is a way to motivate ourselves to reach our highest goals and aspiration without hurting ourselves in the, in the process. It's also a way for us to come to terms with the inner critic. And with these trainings, we can learn to self-regulate. We can learn to activate our soothing systems, to activate our parasympathetic nervous systems, to mitigate the stress we're feeling. 
And compassion on a global scale, I, I really like this quote. Compassion on a global scale, I think the, f the problems we're all facing now in this globalized world, the only way to solve it is by working together. And we have to overbridge this divide between us and them. So, compassion is not only something we do to be kind towards others. Some of the research that have come out recently really fills me with hope. And that is that there's this very strong correlation between compassion and happiness. Happiness researchers and neuroscientists have been mapping the regions in the brain. They put a, a long-term meditator. Uh, he's, he's now known as the world's happiest man. <laughs> His name is Mathieu Ricard. They put him in the fMRI machine and he started meditating on compassion. And the happiness researchers, they had their machine over there and one by one the, the lamps were exploding because you can't be that happy. This fills me with hope because if not out of compassion or willing for others to be feeling better, at least we can develop our compassion out of an egotistical point of view. It's in our own interest. So, well, out of this basis, we decided to shape a platform, a human flourishing oriented digital platform. And for you to grasp this a little bit more, I've divided it into three levels. And the first level is on the mobile phone. It's, uh, we call it the Avagotchi. It's a compassionate self-training tool and a personal coach in one. So you actually interact with this uh, avatar on your mobile phone. And this Avagotchi is also a hub to store user data. Data like CVs, uh, results from surveys, tests, certifications, and a functionality for sharing this data, the, the data that you think that your employer needs or that the public institutions need. So the avatar from the mobile phone is then ported into the virtual world where you actually are your avatar, and hopefully then you are your compassionate self, a little bit nicer version of yourself, when you go out and interact with other people in the virtual environment. So, on this basis of the human flourishing oriented game mechanics, we open up for a whole area of different skills training. And these trainings can be shaped, shaped as single user preset missions, very scalable. They can be set as multiplayer missions. You can have teaching with the, uh, you can have trainings with the teacher present. You can have conferences, you can have one-on-one -on -one sessions. You can do your therapy sessions on the platform. And examples of skills that we can do preset missions of are mainly social skills, cultural skills, emotion skills, attention skills. I recently developed a three-month training program for the employees of PricewaterhouseCooper on how to develop the focused attention. This would do very good on the platform. So, Those are the preset missions mainly, and the interaction in smaller groups. But then we open up a part of the platform, so people from all over the world can integrate. You can build your corporate headquarters in this area. You can have your university, you can have your, your medical care facility. The future of this platform has no limits. So, 
who's behind this? Who's the team of experts that are lending their brains to this project? On the Swedish side, we have one member in the audience here, and we have representative from Karolinska, the Center for Social Sustainability, and we have innovative learning experts, and people from Chalmers, the Applied IT Department. And on an international scale, we have uh, two big names in the mindfulness movement. And from Great Britain, we have two innovation and entrepreneur experts who have developed an employability skills training platform for youth that will be hosted on the same in the same uh, platform as we are developing here. Wow, did that make any sense at all to you? <laughs> I imagine that this is quite a leap to, to grasp this, and especially since not that many of us in the audience are ac the actual gaming ages. But I'm sure that if a younger group of people 20 year olds saw this saw this presentation they would go oh yeah yeah okay for us it's a little bit more of a challenge to grasp how you really can use this virtual reality in the human flourishing oriented area so where we are now yeah we've come a long way in the concept development but now we need to take the next step and finish our proof of concept so that we can start selling this solution to the different interested parties. And who would want to buy that is the next question. Yeah, well, we see two main, two main tracks. One is public institutions or public agencies in different ways. The healthcare, but unemployment offices and immigration are two. And here the model can be a user license. We're getting some help here to, to develop there. The other part is the corporate productivity and efficiency area. Digital HR. Sorry, I'm over time. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> so I think we say thank you very much. I I'm sure you will be successful because the need of, of all of us to improve certain skills, me included, is, is immense. So in light of time, we save questions to, to the break and we have one speaker ahead of us before lunch. So big thanks.